Welcome to today's Sadocon Saturday. So as I said last week, we're going to be exploring for the next several weeks Hojo Undo, or Auxiliary Exercises. Now there are a lot of resources that you can go to, um, online videos, books, etc. Uh, one of the really good ones that I'd recommend is The Art of Hojo Undo by Michael Clark. It's fairly comprehensive, but it does not replace direct instruction from someone who's actually done it, been doing it, done it consistently for years, trained in it. So if, if you want to get the book as sort of a reminder of what you've been taught by direct instruction, great. Trying to learn it directly from a book may be better than nothing, but you have to really be careful not to injure yourself. Last week I mentioned the core, probably the most important device in Okinawan Karate training is the Makiwata. <clears throat> makiwata technically means wrapped straw, which really this isn't. It's a board with a leather pad. Um, the leather pads have become popular, especially even in Okinawa, because they're replaceable, so you can bring your own. If you get your skin or your blood on this, you can take it off and the next guy can put his on and you don't have to worry about cross-contamination. But if you wipe them down and, and keep them clean, not a big problem. They can be wrapped with all sorts of things. Again, go to, I will post again the links to the videos that I made years ago, 20 year plus years ago, on Makiwata training specifically. But just to review really quickly, the Japanese evolution and the Shotokan evolution takes a nice strong front stance and makes the punch into the Makiwata here. Key elements, rotation of the hip, keeping the, not letting the shoulder rise up, okay? You don't want to be just pounding on it. That's not the point. Funakoshi talks about strengthening the fist. Master Asato, his teacher, talked about making the hands to the feet, all the way, everything in between, into spears and swords like weapons. Forging is the term that special forces in the military used to use in the old days of hardening and conditioning your body. It's not just about making your hands tougher. The makiwata, because of its springiness, specifically helps make the wrist stronger so that the support system behind the fist is there, allows you to push, allows you to do a lot of things that strengthen the entire line, the, the um, it's a word I'm trying to remember here, the kinetic chain, the entire kinetic chain from the heel up through the hips, up through the shoulder, into the lats, in strengthening the punch. The punch is not just about the inch on the knuckles. The punch is the wrist, the forearm, the elbows, the shoulder, everything, all the muscles and joints, all the way down the body, okay? So again, I'll post those links. Um, in that training, in those training videos, however, I did mostly the strong Shotokan punching stance here. The Okinawan method tends to be more relaxed, what's called a hanmi or a half facing position, and then rotating and punching here. Again, don't want the elbow to rise up unless I'm specifically working my hook punch here, which is okay, then I can be there. But if I'm in the half facing position, I still want to keep my hip rotation strong and my elbow in and down. And instead of locking on and pressing like I would in a forward stance where I have everything braced, I can't lock on and press from this position, so the punch tends to be more of a hit and pull kind of a motion, okay? So there are a variety of methods, and again, auxiliary back fist, knife hands, I cover all of those in that series of videos, as well as kicking, okay? So even your kicks, getting the foot in the proper position to hit with the ball of the foot with your kick, okay? All of those, or even hitting with the shin, if you choose to condition that way as well. So all of that's covered in those other videos, okay? Just a brief recap of Makiwata training. The next one I want to look at is my wooden guy. Again, as I mentioned last week, Master Hiona had a big tree trunk with holes that he just put a baseball bat into and practice hitting. Some basic drills that I would use for blocking practice. Hitting is good, kicking is good, need to be able to do that. 
but not being hit is also good. So even though this is the Wing Chun style dummy and we could practice the Wing Chun with a dummy form, that would be all fine and good. Um, but for Okinawan karate practice, we're gonna use more the karate style blocks, which again, not really blocks, just using that term. To start with, we take the portions of the arm or hand that we're gonna to use to do our blocking techniques. And I would, for the beginner, start with just placing your arm and then using your body, just push, trying to make sure that you keep good blocking position and just press, and then just pull and press and just hold, press, maybe even rub a little bit for 10, 15 seconds and just work on pushing with the hip so I'm not making impact here, I'm just creating pressure into the blocking arm, okay? So that would be the first way that I would use this for karate practice. The second, once I get used to that pressure and the pushing, and trust me, it'll take a while for your bones to harden. Do not rush this practice. So after the hip pushing and pressing, and again, I'm not just gonna stand here and just push with my arm. It needs to be done, and you can push once and hold, and then do repeated pushes is the second phase. So phase one, push, I should break this down. Push and hold, push and hold, five or 10 seconds. Then once you're used to that pressure, strong hip pulses. Again, not impact, just pushing is the second phase. After that, you're ready to begin, possibly, basic light blocking. So you might start with something like the Uchiyuke Geranbarai. Uchiyuke Geranbarai. Inside and down. Inside and down. Now there are partner drills for this also called Kote Kitai, which you use with a partner. Kote Kitai means promise routine. You, it's a set routine that you would do with a partner. This I use because I don't always have a partner, so it's advantageous. So with the partner drills, it's, it's a six movements with using three on each hand. Okay, and then there's a second version where you start from the top. So we've gone from push and hold to pulse and push to light blocking, to the six star blocking technique, which would be used with a partner in Kote Kitai, which you can replicate, which is why I like this particular dummy. And then it can get more advanced. And the routine that I typically do as my warm up before class at night is I'll use both hands so that I'm using continuous blocking motion. It goes like this, one, Two, keep the guard up, three, then repeat. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then the reverse, the same basic idea, coming from the low to high. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Three, so that my hands are engaged the entire time. Now I could add a band to this and use the band so I'm pulling as I do the movements, or we can practice the grabbing, pulling as you hit. So you also have the, the grappling and pulling in aspects with your blocking. So this would be the next type of uh, Hojo Undo that I would add following Makiwara to learn striking and strengthen your striking postures and striking um, techniques. Uh, front kicks, obviously, as well on the Makiwara. Once I've done those, then I would move to my blocking. Um, a tree with a limb at the proper height, or as I said, just a simple pole stuck into a wall. Anything can work to help condition and use this type of device for strengthening your blocks. 
if your punches and kicks are strong and now your blocks are also strong, trust me, if you have, um, I remember watching Gojiru's Ikan Miyagi Sensei years ago um, when Wade Croninger was back and did, a, did videos in Okinawa on his Gojiru practice. A little tiny Ikan Miyagi Sensei and he would snap a block into you and trust me, if this arm has been properly conditioned and somebody throws a full power block punch at you and you block it with a well-conditioned bone, that's enough in a lot of cases to dissuade that guy from wanting to hurt you any further. And that's the whole idea, change their mind. He wants to speak to you the language of violence, I wanna change his mind about that, okay? And if we can do that with a block and never have to hit him or grab him or twist him or any of those other things, we win the fight. Conditioning and training, your ability to defend yourself or to fight for real is only as good as the condition that your weapons are in. If your gun is dirty, it's gonna misfire. If your knife is dull, it's not going to cut. So these are ways of honing, sharpening, and focusing in so that the weapons of karate, which are these, our weapons of karate are sharp, clean, and prepared for use. How much of it you do is up to you. It is a time investment, it is a priority, I spend probably 15, 20, maybe sometimes as much as a half an hour going through the variety of things that I'll be showing you before every class, every day, at least five times a week, if not seven, I do these things to make sure that my 61 year old body is capable of doing what it needs to should the need arise. So sharpen your tools, hone your weapons, review the Makiwata videos again that I'll repost basic drill that I just gave you for using a wooden dummy or a wooden arm or an arm in a post. Hopefully those will help you get you started on your way to conditioning. Please remember, always start slowly, gradually, and build up. Until next Saturday, thank you again for joining. Keep practicing.